This is Chris Guzman, Bolo Punch Boxing Hour, brought to you by George Rogan Insurance, www.bolopunchboxinghour.com. Streaming to you live, as always, on Ustream.tv. Timmy, the producer, Patterson, over there at the controls. How can our listeners get in touch with us tonight? Here's some on the hotline, 219-743-9743. Yahoo Instant Messenger is up and running. Keyword, Bolo Punch box, Boxing Hour. But the, best, <laughs> <laughs> but the best way to reach us is via the chat room via Ustream.tv. How's that Vicodin doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to say. Guys, we have piles and piles of fights to talk about. Um, we are going to talk quite a bit about the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame that we were uh, lucky enough to be invited to. Um, Timmy the Patterson. Timmy the Patterson was there. <laughs> yeah. Timmy the producer Ooh. Patterson was there. I was there. Um, Jimmy Holmes and my wife Angie Guzman, the, the four of us made the drive down to Belfast, New York. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. We have a very special guest tonight because this week it was announced officially that Pauli Malinaji is going to get his rematch, first of all, against Juan Diaz. It looked like that fight wasn't going to happen at all. <laughs> I'm just getting my bottle opener, dude. It looked like that fight wasn't going to happen at all, and now um, it's been announced that it's going to happen. <laughs> right here. I'm like, what's he doing over there? I thought he was going to stab me. <laughs> yeah, with a Pauli Malinaji with a got his career. rematch against uh, Juan Baby Bull Diaz right here in Chicago at UIC Pavilion. Yeah, um, I wonder how they decided the location. I wonder. Uh, middle ground. I'm wondering why it isn't in New York, but I don't care. I will take it. I am very glad. It's and gonna it be, it's going to be December 12th at UIC Pavilion, which is usually the stomping ground of the promotion that I'm going to be covering tomorrow night um, for uh, Dominic Pasoli's eight count promotions. Yeah, but it, going back to the the uh, yeah Pauli Malignaggi and oh, yeah. Juan Diaz fight, yeah. Pauli Malignaggi fighting in Chicago, it's probably going to work out pretty well for him because it will. a lot of the judges there. Uh, score based on punch count, and uh, Paul, Paul, Paulie has a very high punch count, and, uh, and it's almost like fighting in his backyard if he can get that that advantage. It's it's not Texas. That's all. That's the only thing that really matters. <laughs> in fact, they should just announce it. It's going to be held not in Texas because that is the only thing that Malinashi cares about, and. Um, uh, Juan Diaz has already fought and won in Chicago before. I mean, I don't know if the time that we saw him fight in Chicago was the first time he fought in Chicago, but he definitely has. He fought um, uh, Julio Diaz. Yeah. Um, he you don't fight his title. El, el yeah. Dia de los Diaz. Dia de los Diaz. <laughs> domingo, Domingo, Domingo. <laughs> but either way, uh, it's going to be a pretty exciting fight there. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, of course. But, I mean, this has got to be, like, the hottest rematch of the year. And it's going to be in our backyard. That's outstanding. I can't wait. Um, and we're going to be talking with, with uh, Pauli Malinaji in about five minutes. I'm going to fly through a little bit more material. Um, hello to Pete Perry, to uh, Judy Judy O'Brien, to uh, Little Holmes, Paul Driscoll, Ron Cameron, uh, Dan Miltz, all our friends that are listening tonight. Isn't that right, Timmy? That's right. That's what I freaking said, and I know how to say freaking. <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, Paulie Malinaji. We're going to talk to him in just a couple minutes. He's going to talk about the uh, the decision on uh, on where this fight is going to be held right here in Chicago, um, how he feels about that. He knows he's got a lot of fans. I spoke with him a little bit this afternoon. Um, he He's actually very excited about it. Um, he knows he's got a lot of fans in Chicago. He likes um, he likes the, the judging in Chicago. He likes the fact that that punch count is considered a, you know, a, a positive thing. God forbid that someone who throws 100 <laughs> punches around get credit for it. Yeah. I don't know. They didn't get credit for it in Texas. Um, he, he didn't get credit for it. So uh, It doesn't count in Texas. My God, there were so many awesome doesn't fights. doesn't count in anybody's home stadium. I mean, that's a big, that's just the biggest difference out of all of it. You, every time Diaz is going to land a punch, he's not going to have everybody in the stadium cheering. And the same thing with Paulie. If, if he lands one punch, he's not going to have everybody cheering either. It's just going to level the playing ground a little bit. It will more than level it. It was very lopsided last time. Yeah. It was a very pro Malinaji, uh, pro uh, Diaz crowd, very anti Malinaji. Uh, I don't know of any, of too many people that that would that would boo him, Malinaji. He's he's like a fan favorite. He's like yeah. a great guy, but um. I mean, if, if your boy's from your hometown, you're going to cheer for him. That's yeah. the way it works. Um, 
I know you got to see a great fight between Adam Ad- Ad- and Galata. I emailed it to you. And, and uh, you didn't watch it. And I didn't get that. You emailed it to me and then ended up not watching it yourself. Yeah, I had to go to, uh, what do you call it? I had to go to... Marriage counsel. <laughs> yeah. That's next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and every, I had to go to... Uh, after he goes to the fights tomorrow. Yes, he, he, will, need, he will need some... I'm trying to think counsel. of what Maria is. Benny's my nephew. I don't know what Maria would be considered since she's his, his daughter. But she, they had a, anyways, they had a, like a Halloween party. Uh, Tomas Adamek uh, moved up to heavyweight, <laughs> has moved up to heavyweight already, and challenged the biggest, meanest, strongest... Uh, Polish fighter in the world, Andrew Galata. A lot um, of Polish people are upset that these two guys fought each other. See, I hadn't them. heard anything like that. So wh- wh- what did you hear? I heard that this fight, I mean, everything I was reading that the, the uh, from the fans is that they were upset that these two guys, I mean, Polish boxing fans don't have very many guys that are as high caliber of fighter as these two guys. So they didn't want them to butt heads against each other because somebody's going to get a loss. Here's the, here's the test. Nestor, name five Polish fighters. I know. <laughs> exactly. I get, I, You've I got two that are household yeah. names. The only the only two that I know are the two that we that that, that we just <clears throat> talked about. Other and Tony that, Zale, who's well, not with us anymore. <laughs> right, but <clears throat> uh, current fighters. Zelinski <laughs> was actually his last name, but uh, anyway. Um, so you had uh, Thomas Adamek. He knocks out Galate in the fifth round. Um, Kind of I actually, I actually me. gave Galata the third round. It was surprising <clears throat> to me because I thought, first. I thought Adamek got a hit, would get hit a lot because he usually does. And with Galata's power, I thought he might actually knock 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 Adamek out, and it went the other mm-hmm. way around. Oh, Galata did not do anything outside of that third round. He was a punching bag. He was slow. He's older. He's not old. I mean, not when you have George Foreman and Vander Holyfield fighting well into their forties. Um, Galata's only yeah, 40, 41. I don't re- ever remember Galata being a huge speedster to begin with. No, he's not fast. You know, so he's I mean, not fast, as far but as he, he looked a lot slower than he normally did. So yes. to say that he was slow really means something yes. if Galata's looking slow. Yeah. Because yeah. he always looks relatively slow. Yeah. But he's so powerful that all you need to do is land one or two well, good and, ones and, in a round. Exactly. And, and, and that'll back Adamek up. Adamek didn't care. He landed at will. He was teeing off on him. Yeah. It was something. Uh, also, you had uh, the, the the first round of the uh, the, the Super Six started oh, yeah. up. Uh, I mean, we haven't been on it in a while, so we've got lots of things we can talk about. Arthur Abraham knocked out Jermaine Taylor in the last round and cold. Yeah. Didn't just knock him out. I think Andy. Taylor knew he was behind and came in trying to get the knockout himself and got caught. Unbelievable. And it was a pretty good fight. I mean, Taylor was definitely losing the fight. You knew Arthur Abraham was taking it to him. I didn't think he was going to score a knockout like that, though. I didn't either. Not well, at not did? at that point in the fight. Earlier no, in the fight, I thought it might have happened. <clears throat> That's sort of what Jermaine Taylor's mo is anymore, though. I'll stay with you, yeah. and then you knock my ass out at the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to fight you all the way to the t- to the eleventh round and, and fifty two seconds. And it was like the tenth round when he got knocked out by uh, Kelly Pavlik, if I'm not mistaken. That was over. Yeah. That was two years ago. I know time. it was late in the fight. I don't. I it don't know. was very late. And then he just got knocked out by by Frotch. In his last fight, in the last in the round. round. Last and he was winning that fight. Yeah. He was winning. Carl Frotch was in the fight of his life against Andre Durrell, though. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and he got a, he squeaked out with a unanimous decision. Yeah, uh, the problem with Durrell, though, is he he looked like he was running from him. That That's the bad part in that fight. It's uh, hard to give him rounds if he's leaving the scene of the crime. I mean... As d- opposed to standing there trying to engage. And... At the end of the fight, he did start engaging because uh, I think he had a feeling that he was behind. Oh, well, at that point, you have no choice. We're going to go ahead and take our first break. We'll be right back with former world champion Pauly, the Magic Man Malinaji, right here on Bolo Punch. We'll be right back. Rogie Insurance is a four-generation insurance family serving Indiana families for over 80 years. As a member of both independent...